Hey, this is Ken with Blacktail Studio, and this week I'm going to show you how I took that slab of wood, added some cool things like liquid brass resin, some lights, some outlets to make a pretty cool smart desk for my wife. Stay tuned. If you decide you want to do a project like this, but you don't know where to get the wood, you can actually shop where I shop. I shop up at Gobi Walnut in Portland, but they do have a huge online presence, so they will ship anywhere in the world. If you're in Portland, they're dog friendly, and my dog Riggs freaks out at cart rides. It loves them. So really cool, really nice people, not just walnut. They have veneers, burls, all kinds of crazy stuff. We landed on this amazing black walnut single slab, though. Pretty incredible. Lots more on this. I love building desks. If not for any other reason, is that they are about as big of an item as I can comfortably move around myself. I start getting to like an eight foot dining table. They get to be pretty cumbersome and I have to get friends or rig up my ceiling, which is just to turn a table over. So I was pretty excited about getting this desk build started for my wife. And since this was gonna be a single slab rectangular desk shape, it wasn't gonna be the most complicated to get started. I just needed to make sure I got my full 30 by 60 measurement that I was going for in the end. This slab ended up being incredibly beautiful, but with the really curly, really figured wood, you get some really interesting cracks. And I wasn't sure about doing that brass resin that you saw there at the start, but in the end, that ended up being a perfect solution for these really interesting cracks throughout the whole desk. For your benefit, I generally edit down a lot of the cutting, so it looks like I make one pass with my track saw, and generally it takes about, I don't know, three, four, sometimes five passes to cut through a thick slab like this. So. Don't think that something's wrong with your saw. It takes you a little bit more than just the one pass that you see me make. If you watched my last video, I had a really deep chamfer that I cut on an epoxy table. And originally I wanted to use a router bit, but I couldn't find a router bit big enough to make a tall chamfer like this. So I found that if I overlap my track, I could go essentially as thick as my blade will go. So it was a really good, much cheaper than finding, you know, $100, $150 router bit to get that deep chamfer like that. You might think that it's gonna be hard to get all the cuts to line up perfectly, but as long as you overlap the same amount, which I just used my carpenter square, I think it was like a quarter inch overlap that I did on all sides, each of your cuts are gonna line up perfectly, as you can see right there. And then on the corners, I went and added a 45 degree cut at a 45 degree angle. I actually saw that on a picture frame once and thought it looked pretty cool, so I added it to this desk. Once I had these cuts made, I was ready to start on the cracks in the middle of the table. And these were a little bit of a point of contention between the wife and I. I wanted to do some patchwork. She really isn't a fan of patchwork. So we kind of went back and forth with all the different things. I talked about doing like brass bow ties or wood bow ties. And she doesn't really care for bow ties as much. And since this was going to be her desk, we had to come up with something that she was going to like and that I was capable of doing. And so when I discovered doing this brass resin, um, it was kind of like a eureka moment for the two of us because it was something we both really loved. So sometimes a little bit of contention is good because it forces you to get outside your comfort zone, outside, think outside the box to come up with something pretty cool that I actually can't wait to do more of. I did about 100 sample pieces of this brass resin before I got going, and I'll share with you what I learned because it's actually not quite as easy as it looks. Also include links to all the products I used. And one of the things, if you've done, worked with pigments and epoxy before, is you need to forget everything you've learned about that, is you need a ton of this brass resin in there. And I think this is actually the bronze resin. So at least a 50-50 mix of the powder to the epoxy. And then I am degassing it in a vacuum chamber. And this is gonna help remove a lot of the bubbles. And that was one of the problems in my sample pieces was these little pits would remain from the bubbles in the epoxy. So I am using a slow cure uh, epoxy that's going to take several days to cure, and that's going to allow a lot of them to pop on their own. And I'm also warming it in this water bath, and that's going to make it really liquidy. It's going to let it really seep down into those cracks. So you can see there just how liquidy it is, and that was really key to getting a good finish with this brass resin. And you probably noticed that I had it taped on the underside of the table. So when I pour this through, it's not going to seep right out the backside, even though it is very liquidy, as I mentioned. So what I'm doing here is going to brush it in, going to get it as much resin as I possibly can in these cracks. Then I'm going to come back, tape the top of it, as you can see here. And this is that Tyvek house wrap tape. It's much better at holding the epoxy in than that painter's tape you saw on the back because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let gravity do the work is all this brass is so heavy that it sinks down really quickly. So you need to pour these upside down on like a traditional resin and pigment table. So what I'm gonna do here, get it all sealed up, flip it over, and let gravity do the work to let all that brass resin soak to the bottom. 
You can see here in case any of it leaks out, I have the plastic wrap there. So I actually went out of town for a few days and when I came back, I think it was about four days later, this is what it looked like. And it didn't look good so far, but we're gonna put the belt sander on it and see how it looked once we got down there. And you can see there, it's actually looking like it filled it pretty consistently. There were some tiny little pits. And the cool thing about this brass resin is if you add the CA glue, this thin CA glue to the little kind of touch-ups of the brass resin, it fills it almost perfectly, almost better than the epoxy looks actually. So don't be afraid to do some touch-ups with that uh, CA glue and the brass powder. And one of the downsides was I had to do, since I had to have gravity do the work, I could only do one side at a time. So doing the same thing I did on the top, on that side piece there, coming back. And these ones were so small that I actually was only going to use the CA glue. And it took me a little bit to brush in enough powder, but that thin CA glue will soak down really well and provides a really nice finish to that brass powder. And it cures in about, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. So you have a little bit of time to add some more powder like that if it does kind of uh, go below the level of your crack. One of the downsides to this brass powder is that it's really expensive, even by epoxy standards. So if your first thought is you want to do a big brass river pour, uh, I won't say it's impossible. I will say it's going to be pretty expensive. And I'm kind of experimenting on my next brass resin project because I definitely think there's a future in this. I think it's going to be pretty cool. But these little bags are pretty expensive, so it does work a little bit more uh, cost effective to use on small things like the cracks. And since I wanted this desk to last a really long time and the wife doesn't really like the look of bow ties, I went ahead and added some bow ties to the underside of all these cracks to really prevent them from separating and ruining that nice pretty brass filled cracks that we have on top. And I didn't go, you know, as precise as I probably would have on the top. I again want them to be pretty presentable, but I rush them a little bit more on the bottom than I do on the top. You might remember these cracks from one of the first cuts we made at the start of the video and they're really cool looking cracks and so i thought this brass resin was going to be a pretty neat feature in the end to have these rather unique looking cracks filled with this real liquid brass since this epoxy and brass is going to sand much different than the wood i had to be really careful getting these perfectly flat because it would be really easy to round these over. So I got out the rasp and the file set to make sure I got the bulk of it off, keeping it nice and flat, and then coming back with a sander and then removing the excess. And overall, it actually worked pretty well. After I shredded a couple belts, sanding these bow ties flush, I was able to move back on to some brass touch-ups. And this is a good technique I found for the touch-ups. This isn't the thin, this is the medium CA glue and I just worked it right in to a little pile of that brass powder and then I touched it up directly and I should mention that it cures in you know just about 10 seconds or so so you got to work pretty quick you go through a lot of these little brushes but I buy like 50 packs of them on Amazon for it cost about a dime a piece so they are an acceptable loss but working working this in directly to the powder is a really good solution for the very small touch-ups. You can see here pretty quick the advantage to using the CA glue for the small pieces instead of epoxy is that this was about 30 seconds of work before it was ready to sand and was essentially finished, whereas the epoxy, you know, could take a couple days or even 24 hours if I used a fast drying one. I was going to be dropping in these really cool brass outlets and power supplies that my wife got at a furniture market. So I made this pretty simple jig and it's going to make a little bit more sense once you see the outlets here. but. All I basically did was drill a hole uh, the size that matched my offset, and I'm gonna match it with my router, drop it in, and everything should fit just perfect. And I'm doing a little test fit there, and the depth was good, the fit was perfect, and I was able to move on and do a couple more, testing each time between holes. And there's gonna be one more that's gonna be for the light at the far end. And now is I'm gonna show you how I drilled the rest of the holes. And I wanted to do this by hand, but it's kind of hard to drill a two inch hole by hand. So I decided it was best to use my drill press. And this is an all new type of Forstner bit to me. I can't remember the name of the company, but I will add a link to it once I find it in the video description. And there was like no burning. There was hardly any heat. It gave a perfectly smooth hole. It doesn't look like it would give a smooth cut with that type of bit, but it really does. So. Highly recommend these new Forstner bits. I can't wait to get a whole bunch more of them. I'm reminded again of why I love building desks because if I was doing this on a big dining table, 
certainly wouldn't be moving it over to my drill press and I'm not sure what I would have done to get these holes like this, but there, there's always a way. But you can see there is my USB drop in and it fit absolutely perfect. And I just love it when things come together like this. But what you can see there is the little bushing that holds it on. It wasn't designed for a table this thick, so I had to use a rabbit bit, create that relief, and that was actually a pretty simple solution to allow this because I think these weren't supposed to be used on a table thicker than like an inch and a half. And as I mentioned before, my wife got these at a furniture market. She's in the furniture industry, and I believe they were by Doug Mockett, but I can't seem to find them again because I get a lot of questions on Instagram about where they can find these. So I believe they're by Mockett, but let me know if you can find them because I'm uh, not sure where to find them again. This was another design choice by my wife is she's told me that uh, aesthetically things need to come in threes and fives so we couldn't do four with like a wire grommet in a brass style so what I did is I came up with this hidden one using a little walnut replacement piece here and I actually made about three or four different ones of those to get the best match with the wood grain and also I made some different sizes to allow for more wires or less wires to run through moving on went with my standard eighth inch roundover bit which I do on probably about 90% of my tables. It just gives a nice kind of hand round look, uh, but keeps it perfectly consistent. And then I wanted to add a little bit of machine lines to this brass resin to give it, to make it really look like metal. And you can see there, you really can sand it just like metal. It's pretty neat. And since I want to really be able to feel the wood grain and even feel the metal, this brass resin, when you feel it, it's actually cold, just like metal. I wanted, I didn't want to use like a polyurethane or a varnish, so I'm using this Osmo 3054. And this is going to be a finish that I can get a perfect finish in a dusty shop without having to worry about dust settling on it like I would on a varnish or an epoxy or any one of those film forming type of finishes. And you don't have to use a heavy duty buffer like the one I'm using here. It makes my life a little bit easier. You can even do it by hand or you can just stick one of these white pads or even a red floor pad onto your orbital sander and kind of put your shoulder into it, put a little weight into it and buff it on that way. So don't think you have to have a big expensive floor buffer to get a finish like this. For the sides, I just went through with a small cutoff section of the same type of white pad. Buffed it in by hand and once I got everything covered really well, you can let it set up for about 30, 45 minutes, and then you just come back and buff it off. And you can really start to feel it tacked up, which is why it's actually shoving the table when I'm buffing it off. But uh, what you wanna do with this 3054 is make sure you get every last bit of it removed. And that is gonna be cute. You don't want any of it left on there. So took a few minutes with these blue rags, got it all buffed off, let it cure for a couple days, and it was ready to be assembled. The table base was actually involved enough that I made an entire video just on building the table base. It wasn't quite as involved as the top, but it was pretty interesting and I think it fit pretty well with this top. So I'll include a link in the video description to that too. Okay, you can see the desk is all together and finally in use. I want to really thank my wife for being so patient on this desk process, but overall, I think she's pretty happy with it. I think that light is pretty cool. I love that kind of articulating ball uh, joint at the base of it. I like the dimmer switch. I like having the USB and the power. You may be wondering why I didn't put a wireless phone charger and we talked about it. We just thought that technology was gonna be a little bit dated so overall we decided not to do the wireless charging or the sit stand so it's not quite a smart desk but it does have some cool features of a smart desk and let me know in the comments what you think if this is technically a smart desk or if this is just another desk so i wouldn't do it any differently but some people probably wonder why there's not a little more technology in a desk so involved as this one also, I'd love to hear from you guys on what should be next with this real brass epoxy resin. I think it's an incredibly cool medium that we could do a ton of stuff with. So I'd love to hear some ideas from you guys on what should be the next project with that brass resin.
I want to give you guys a little bit of credit for making it this far in the video. So my first name is Cam. And if you start your comment with the word Cam, C-A-M, I'll know that you made it to the end of the video. And I promise you, I will respond to your comment first. So any questions, comments, anything you want to add in the comments, start with the name C-A-M and I will respond to that first. So thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos just like this one.